Hello everyone, my name is John and today I'm going to talk about sharpening. Sharpening is essential maintenance for your dental hand instruments and no dental kit is complete without sharpening stone for that reason. It does require technique but this is very easy to learn and it's one that only requires minor tweaks depending on the instrument you are working with. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us or contact your local IM3 representative. So why do we sharpen? Well, every time an instrument is used, minute particles of metal are worn away from its tip, making it dull and ineffective over time. The main goal of sharpening is to restore the cutting edge of the blade, which by proxy will preserve the original shape of the instrument. Each instrument is designed a certain way for a reason, and altering this shape through use affects how it does its job. A blunt instrument can also lead to clinician fatigue, as they work harder to remove deposits in the mouth. A sharp edge will cleanly slide under a deposit to help lift it from the tooth, something a blunt edge is too rounded to do. And finally, instruments that are cared for and maintained properly work as they should. Blunt instruments can damage tooth structures and prolong surgeries, compromising the level of care and service we are promising our customers. So we know why we should sharpen, but how do we know when to do it? Well, that depends on a couple of things. How often are you using your instruments? Is it weekly, daily, multiple times a day? The blade is worn every time it's used, so the more frequently you use the instrument, the more frequently you will have to sharpen it. How difficult was the surgery you just did? A patient with significant tartar buildup will require a lot of scaling compared to others. This one surgery could blunt your instrument as much as two or three other dental procedures on patients with less deposits. Do you find your scaling becoming increasingly more difficult and taking longer? You'll feel the difference a sharp instrument makes when compared to a blunt one. All these factors means there's no set answer for when to sharpen, but a good rule of thumb is to lightly sharpen after every procedure. This means it becomes routine and you'll never have to realize you're working with a blunt instrument halfway through a surgery with an anesthetized patient in front of you. For those of you beginning, a quick test to see how sharp your instruments are is using them as you would on a tooth, but on a plastic rod. A toothbrush handle works very well for this. You should feel the blade bite as you move it up and down. A blunt blade will effortlessly slide up and down the plastic in comparison. If maintaining your instruments is important, so is maintaining the equipment you use to do it. Sharpening is done using a specially shaped and textured stone. To keep it working well, it's a good habit to wipe it down after use to remove the debris. It's also a good idea to alternate where you sharpen on the stone to prevent little dips and grooves developing and therefore damaging the flat surface of the stone and sharpening instruments incorrectly. A lot of people are unsure if they should use oil when they sharpen, and while it isn't an absolute must, it has its benefits. Using oil is a good net to trap all the residue from filing. It also helps lubricate the stone to avoid excess friction and leaves a nice surface finish on the blade. Once you've successfully sharpened your instrument, you need to keep it sharp until time to use it. This is ideally done by using cassettes. Loosely storing your instruments in a drawer or a box means they will roll around and bang off each other, blunting in the process. A cassette neatly stores them, preserving their sharpness for surgery and making them easier to autoclave as a set. Rubber caps to place over sharp ends do exist, but they can do their own work at blunting the blade as they are placed on and off, similar to putting a needle through the rubber cap of a medicine bottle. It's minuscule, but it makes a difference. We are going to start by looking at how to sharpen our scaler and our curettes. But before we begin, there's a very important landmark called a terminal end that you need to locate on each instrument. The terminal end is the shaft that extends from the end of the blade face to the first bend in the instrument. It varies for each one, but the same principle applies. As you can see on screen, we have our universal curette on the left, our Gracie curette in the middle, and our universal scaler on the right. The terminal end is the shaft located between each of the arrow points. First up is the universal scaler. This has three 90 degree faces that create a triangle and come together to form a pointed tip. 
It's used for super gingival scaling. Next, we have the universal curette, which has a single 90 degree face and a curved toe tip. The rounded tip makes it an ideal instrument to scale subgingively without piercing the gum or causing damage. Lastly, we have our Gracie curette, which also has a rounded toe tip for subgingival scaling. The difference with this curette is its blade face is angled at 70 degrees, each end facing the opposite direction to the other. It's an excellent tool to subgingively scale where the 90 degree face of the universal curette isn't angled enough for the cutting edge to achieve contact with the tooth or the deposit, depending on the shape and curvature. Because we are working with two angles between the three instruments, they need to be sharpened accordingly, and that's where the IM3 sharpening guide can help. This chart has been developed with an easy colour-coded system to help you angle your stone against the correct blade face so the relevant instrument is sharpened properly. It can be conveniently folded around the table for quick access when sharpening after each procedure. To use, the tip of the instrument is placed where all lines on the graph meet at a point. You then line the terminal end of your instrument parallel to the axis. The sharpening stone is then positioned at an angle based on the colour code, yellow and red for your universal scalar and curette, or grey for the Gracie curette. When your instrument is in position, take your sharpening stone and position at the correct angle depending on the instrument you are using. In this case, I am working with a universal scalar, so I have positioned my stone in the yellow and red marked zone. Move your stone in an up and down motion, starting at the back of the blade face and working towards the tip. This sharpens the entire blade face evenly. As for the universal scalar, the universal curette has a 90 degree face, and so it is sharpened using the yellow and red marked zone also. For a Gracie curette, we will use the same technique we use for a universal curette and a universal scalar. However, we'll position the stone in the gray marked zone. This will comply with the 70 degree angle that is on a Gracie curette. For all three of our instruments, we will need to sharpen each of the blade faces on both ends and on both sides. On a Gracie curette, however, this is only one side per end. Next on our list of hand instruments are elevators and luxators, both of which play their own very important part in tooth extraction. First up are luxators, which are used to cut the periodontal ligament and therefore they are always used before an elevator. Elevators are used after the periodontal ligament has been successfully cut to elevate the tooth out of the alveolar bone. They come in two forms, usually winged elevators or straight elevators. They both do the same job, however it depends on user preference. All three of these instruments are to be sharpened at a 45 degree angle, and this is done using the same sharpening stone we use for our scalar and our curettes. One important thing to note when working with elevators is they should not be used like a shovel. Using elevators in a lever position like this applies a huge amount of pressure to both the jaw and the tooth, and it can damage the surrounding tooth that it is applying pressure to. Luxators are used by inserting straight down and pulling straight back up. They have a flat, sharp point which cuts the periodontal ligament as they do so, and you do this around each face of the tooth. To elevate, the elevator is inserted straight down. A twisting pressure is then inserted to the left for a roughly 10 seconds before applying this to the right-hand side as well. It is then returned to its middle position and pulled straight up. You do this on each face of the tooth also. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this presentation, it is a very good routine to get into to sharpen your instruments after each dental procedure, and luxators and elevators are no different. To sharpen them, you should position at a 45 degree angle as shown on screen. You then move your stone upwards two to three times to successfully sharpen them. You should always finish on an upward stroke. Thank you very much for watching this presentation 
and please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any questions. We are contactable by email or phone, or you can contact your local IM3 representative. And you can find all the products mentioned in this presentation on our website, im3vet.eu or im3vet.co.uk. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.